Okay, so hello and welcome to Attentive Healthcare Solutions webinar. We're excited to share our next-gen add-on product with you today, Refund Manager. My name is Chelsea Grover, and I'm the Marketing Communications Coordinator for Attentive. I'd like to take a moment to explain the process for today's presentation. First, I'd like to mention that this webinar will be recorded. Next, for those of you who aren't familiar with Itenev, I wanted to share a bit of who we are with you. We specialize specifically in next-gen healthcare. We're good at getting data into, out of, around, and through next-gen. Basically, our goal in life is to make delighted clients by helping them get the absolute most out of their next-gen software investment. We're passionate about providing solutions for our healthcare provider partners, which in turn help them to improve patient care, enhance the patient experience, and maintain a financially healthy practice. To sum it up, we do everything next-gen. And along with Refund Manager, we have another uh, productivity add-on solution for NextGen, ChartGuard, which creates PDF backups of your patient charts. Next, I wanted to mention an educational webinar that we're going to be presenting tomorrow, Special Scoring Under MIPS. A sizable number of clinicians may be eligible for special scoring under MIPS and may not realize it. Join us tomorrow to learn if you could qualify for a chance to report less and get more points. We're going to cover special scoring details for a wide variety of providers, focusing on those that are small practice, participating patient-centered medical home, and or considered a non-physician clinician. Once we identify these special scoring entities, we will go over the intricate details on how it will benefit providers. If you're interested in joining us for that webinar tomorrow, simply go to our website and register on the educational and events page of our website, or you can leave a note in the GoToWebinar control panel, and I'd be happy to register you on my behalf, your behalf someone's behalf. Okay, anyways, back to today's webinar. For audio clarity purposes, everyone's phone will remain muted throughout the entire webinar. If you experience audio issues, please use the chat box to let us know so we can resolve them. And again, questions may be entered in the questions box. So without further delay, I'd like to introduce our presenters for today. Tom Siko is Itenev's business development manager, and Joel Schultz is the director of product solutions at Itenev. So Tom, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to you. Feel free to get started when you're ready. Hey, thank you very much, Chelsea. And uh, so thank you for joining our webinar today. And we'll be talking about uh, Refund Manager and how it streamlines and automates the uh, refund process and credit balance process. The agenda that we have is uh, we'll talk about what Refund Manager is, and then we'll talk about why practices buy Refund Manager. Uh, you'll see how it works through the demonstration that we'll give to you, and I'll turn that over to Joel Schultz and he'll go through the demonstration of the product. And I'll give you a brief overview of what Itentive is, and uh, then we'll get a chance to answer any of your questions through the, uh, through the submitted uh, question submittal box. So to start with uh, Refund Manager, really the purpose of Refund Manager is to make uh, your job easier. And we do that through the streamlining and automating of the refund process from start to finish, from the point that you identify where the credit balances lie in the patient accounts to the point that you uh, issue a refund check. And we looked at that total process and found out that there were places that we could eliminate data entry. And uh, one of those places that we could eliminate data entry was when we move the information or when the information is entered into your accounting application. Uh, so we have uh, integration to your accounting application uh, and that can be either a direct interface or a, use a CSV file to move that information back and forth. The overall goal of Reef Manager is really to increase productivity. When we went back and talked to our clients about uh, their experiences with Reef Manager and what it did for them, uh, they told us that they had been able to reallocate resources to other areas of billing and accounts receivable and be able to spend uh, less time sending money out of the organization and spend more time bringing money into the organization. When we went back and talked to our clients, you know, some of, the, uh, some of them said uh, various um, positive things about Refund Manager, and here's some snippets of those comments that came back. I won't go into each one of them, but what I will do is focus your attention on a couple of them. Uh, the first one I'll focus your attention on is the first bullet that says reduce from days down to hours now. That shows that there is a productivity improvement. And if you look at the fourth bullet, it says pays for itself in time savings alone. That shows that there is a return on investment.
there are risks associated with carrying credit balances in uh, in your system, and uh, uh, those risks could be Medicare penalties, insurance contracts, state laws uh, have uh, risks associated with them, um, some estate profits, and uh, and fraud. With regards to um, Medicare, there are clauses in Medicare that um, there will be penalties with regards to not getting credits back to them in a timely manner. Uh, with regards to insurances, insurance contracts, there's usually clauses in those with regards to uh, not getting credit balances back to them in a timely manner as well. There are uh, state laws with regards to carrying credit balances and uh, not getting that money back to the individuals in a timely fashion. It varies from state to state, so you'll have to take a look at your state laws and see what they are as they apply to you. But there, some examples are, are here with regards to California. Uh, they have a law that basically says that after 60 days, um, you need to start paying interest on that account uh, if it's not if the credit's not turned back to them. In, uh, in Oregon, um, it's considered unclaimed property after three years and needs to be reported back to the state. And, uh, and most states have unclaimed property laws with regards to that. There can be you know, a case of uh, class action lawsuits as well that can come out of this. There are uh, some organizations that think credit balances are uh, in, uh, part of a what I'll call a revenue stream or a profit center, so to speak, meaning that if uh, if the credit goes unclaimed or unreturned uh, to the individual, um, that money can come back into the organization. But as we just uh, talked about with Medicare insurances and state laws, that that's not the case. And uh, there is potential for fraud. And by that, I mean, we talked to a lot of uh, prospects and, and clients over the years with regards to refund manager. And we've come across uh, organizations that have 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 instances of credit balances in their system, uh, totals that can range anywhere from $50,000 to um, $800,000. And when you're getting into those types of numbers, the potential for some type of unethical activity um, can arise as well. So using a product like Refund Manager allows you to manage the risk that we just talked about and uh, and be able to eliminate those risks if you're, if you're using Refund Manager on a regular basis. These next few slides I'm going to go through are uh, basically talking about the existing process that is typically used within a, a practice or a health center um, in processing credit balances and issuing refund checks. And then we'll talk about um, how Refund Manager streamlines and automates that process. So with uh, the existing process, you can process a credit uh, balance on a patient account in a couple different ways. One, what I'll call a, a reactive manner, meaning that a patient calls up and says, I have a credit balance on my account, and I'd like to have a refund check issued to me. In the other case, you're managing it on a proactive manner, meaning that um, periodically, every couple of weeks, once a month, um, you're going through and finding where the credit balances lie on patient accounts and, and managing the process that way as far as uh, issuing refund checks. In either case, whether it's going to be a reactive manner or a proactive manner, um, you're going to look at the encounter details, you're going to look at the transaction details, you're going to look at the account details, and then you're going to decide what to do with that credit balance. You're going to decide whether to issue a refund check or you're going to decide whether to apply that credit to an encounter that has open balance on it. In either case, um, you're going to go through a series of four steps uh, for that, and if you're processing 250 credit balances, um, you're going to go through basically a thousand steps in trying to decide what to do with that credit balance in that particular sitting for for those credits. Once you get through that process and you've identified the ones that are to be refunded, you need to get that information over to accounting. And, and how that information, that refund uh, information gets over to accounting happens in many different ways in, in many different organizations. Uh, it happens via a spreadsheet. 
Uh, it happens by an email. It happens by a uh, stack of papers being dropped on somebody's desk in the accounting area. It happens by word of mouth. Somehow it gets over there, and when it gets over there, the accountant has to take that information and enter it into the accounting system. So they have to enter in the name of the individual that's receiving the refund check. They have to enter in the address, the city, the state, the zip, the amount of the refund in the accounting system. So there's a lot of uh, manual entry, data entry that has to occur. And once they enter that information in, then they have to print the refund checks. Once they get the refund checks printed, um, they're done with that process. And then some organizations um, bring that check information and enter it into uh, back into NextGen and update the patient chart with that information. Uh, other organizations do that. Do that. So it, uh, it varies from, from organization to organization. But you know, as I mentioned, sometimes it, the information gets over there, sometimes it doesn't. So it can be a very uh, very time-intensive process, a very task-intensive process if you're if you're doing the um, the, uh, the handling of credit balances and issuing your refund checks in this manner. With Refund Manager, what we did is um, we had a client or two come to us and say, this is a, a long process for us. Is there anything that you can do to help us? So as I mentioned earlier, we look at the, the total process from start to finish, and we look for ways that we could um, streamline and automate the process. So where could we eliminate that entry? Uh, where could we make it easier to uh, find the credit balances on patient accounts? Where could we make it much easier for individuals to see the information as far as what makes up that credit balance and then allowing them to quickly make a decision on what to do with that credit balance. So through the uh, search mechanisms and through the filters that we created on the front end, it makes it much easier for billing people to identify where the credit balances lie in the patient accounts. And then in the way that we presented the information to them, makes it much easier for them to uh, decide what to do with that credit balance, whether to issue a refund or whether to apply that credit to an encounter that has a balance on it. Or in the case, in some cases, you know, you're looking at the account and you're looking at the credit balance and looking at what makes up that credit balance and there's just too much information there to go through everything in this particular sitting. So you, you need, uh, need to delay it or task it out for further research. Um, then we looked at the way that we get information over to accounting, and you know we found that we could eliminate that entry by moving that information and interfacing with the accounting application. So, in bringing the the check information as far as the name of the check recipient, the um, address, the city, the state, the zip, the amount of the refund check, information like that, bring that over to accounting into uh, the accounting application through either a, a, um, a CSV file or through a direct interface to the accounting application, we were able to eliminate uh, a lot of the data entry. So really now all, all the accountant has to do is make sure that there's check paper in the printer and that the checks are being printed out properly. We looked at the back end piece of bringing that check information as far as check number, check date, check amount, and what could we do with that? Well, we could eliminate data entry of having to manually enter that information back in the next gen. So through the automation piece there as well, we're able to uh, bring that check information and eliminate the data entry of that information back into next gen and update patient chart. So as you'll see in the demonstration, when Joe goes through it, you're gonna see the, the streamlining on the front end and the um, automation on, on the back end. Refund Manager has three modules that, that make up um, the application. The Credit Scout module, the Batch Detective module, and the Importer module. And now you're gonna see in the demonstration, you'll see the, the, these three modules and, and how they work. Uh, the Credit Scout module is the one that's primarily used by the billing people to find where the credit balances uh, lie. So the searching and the filtering of the credit balances. And then being able to decide what to do with that credit balance. Uh, whether to issue a refund or to apply that credit to an encounter that has an open balance on it or to task it out for further research to the workload manager in NextGen. The best 
module, the second module that you'll see in the demonstration, and that is the one that brings the uh, refund check information over to the accounting application. And then the third module that you'll see in the demonstration is the importer module, and that's the one that completes the process and brings the check information back over into uh, NextGen and updates the patient account, patient chart with the check number, check date, and check amount. So some of the benefits um, of, of Refund Manager, it, it does reduce the time and labor for issuing refunds and uh, significantly because of the automation piece and because of the streamlining uh, piece. Uh, you are able to apply the credits uh, balances to other encounters in the individual practice um, quickly through the, the, uh, the process that we put in place for that or the mechanism that we put in place for that. Um, as I mentioned, you can task it off for further research if you need to. Um, it integrates, as I mentioned, it integrates with uh, many different accounting applications to um, reduce the data entry time as well as um, because it's automated, it brings the information over there, uh, the potential for data entry errors gets reduced tremendously as well. Uh, Refund Manager creates um, notes and documentation along the way, and you'll see some of this in, uh, in the process. When Joe goes through the demonstration, you'll see some of the self-documentation that Refund Manager generates as, as well. And as mentioned, uh, importing the check numbers uh, over into, back into NextGen gives the, the, you know, basically the front office staff the ability to um, answer calls such as somebody calls and says, I had a refund check issued to me, or I requested a refund check to be issued to me. Um, I haven't seen it yet. The, the front office staff can, can take a look at NextGen and be able to say, oh, yes, that check was sent out on this date uh, and sent to this address. Um, that way the, the calls don't have to go to the back office. Um, this with Refund Manager, um, some organizations have multiple practices set up in their environment. Uh, with the the version of Refund Manager, uh, it is multi-practice aware, meaning that if you have an individual that um, has received services from a couple couple different practices that are set up in in your next gen environment, uh, you'll be able to see the total financial picture across all of the packages, all of the practices for that particular uh, individual. Um, you can apply the credits between the practices as well. And this is great for, let's say, you have um, a clinic and then you have maybe a, a surgery center and you accept a deposit for a surgery in the clinic um, that really needs to be applied to the surgery center. Um, you can, with fund manager, be able to, to move that credit now uh, over to uh, the surgery center. Uh, you can pick credit, credits from multiple practices on a single screen. Um, you can create next-gen batches across the various practices from a single screen. Uh, we, we've incorporated the ability to uh, in, um, allow for a, a workflow, so to speak, meaning that you can um, uh, split the, the refund process between people who request the refund and then people who um, actually approve the refund. So you can have a requester and approver role uh, within Refund Manager. And then uh, for those organizations that use QuickBooks, we have the ability to uh, maintain multiple checking accounts. So now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Joe Schultz, and he's going to go through a demonstration of Refund Manager to show you uh, how it works and uh, and see, that, like I mentioned, the three modules, the Credit Scout module, the Back Effective module, and the Importer module. Great. Thank you, Tom. Uh, we're going to go ahead and switch over into my machine here so your screen may flicker for just a moment as that cuts over and then we'll jump into the demonstration so we created refund manager in partnership with many next gen sites over the course of a dozen plus years right now so we've been doing this since 2005 with refund manager it started out as a, a simple tool and it's grown into something that's become more powerful yet still simple to use. It's written to be 
compatible with next-gen practice management and to be integrated with next-gen practice management. We launch from the add-on menu in next-gen practice management, which gives us the context in terms of what practice we're in, what user ID we're logged in as, uh, what database we're pointing to. Are we pointing at ng-test or ng-demo or ng-prod? So Refund Manager, we've worked hard over the years to build in a level of integration that makes it seem like you're still working in the next-gen practice management world. In fact, many of the paradigms you're gonna see here and how Refund Manager works should be very familiar to people who spend all day in next-gen practice management. So it cuts down on the learning curve taking that approach and it just gives a sense of familiarity about Refund Manager and that it really is extending uh, what happens in NextGen. As Tom mentioned, we're gonna focus on three modules today. We're gonna start with the Credit Scout, which is your NextGen facing piece of Refund Manager. So you're getting your credit balances and deciding, do I wanna refund them? Do I wanna move them around to other encounters or charges where money is owed? Or do I wanna task it out and handle it later? So we'll spend most of our time in the demonstration here uh, in the Credit Scout, which is this first icon. And that is uh, that portion is gonna be mostly what we call streamlining. Tom mentioned streamlining and automating the refund process. So the streamlining is you're still gonna decide what gets done, but we're gonna speed up the work that needs to get done. So we're gonna create that work for you um, on your behalf. So once you have a number of credits that you've processed, a percentage of those are gonna be refunds. So we're gonna go into the batch detective and we're gonna take those refunds out of next gen and put them into the accounting system. As mentioned, we support a number of different accounting systems. In our demonstration environment here, we have uh, QuickBooks loaded up and that's one of those where we use a API, a direct programmatic interface to talk to the accounting system. Other ones may use files depending on the capability of that accounting system. So we'll jump into the batch detective second and then we'll close out the demonstration by bringing information such as check number, check date, and check amount from the accounting system back into NextGen without having to do all that data entry. So let's dive in here to the Credit Scout. And I'm going to pull up um, a number of credits in our test database. And I've picked some out that are good examples of how Refund Manager works. Similar to NextGen, we have our search criteria at the top of the form. We have our results in the lower part of the form. Uh, we use the right mouse button, just like NextGen does. In our search criteria, these are all um, items that have been added to Refund Manager over time based upon requests of clients who have been using it. And they come to us and go, hey, you know, if we could search by account number, that'd be great. Or if we could chunk up our encounters by date range so we're not always searching the whole database, that'd be helpful. Or can you help us um, filter out which ones are more likely refunds versus ones that require more research or, or just find exclusively balances that need to be distributed to other encounters, things like that. So we've created these uh, search boxes at the top here for you to be able to specify what criteria works in your situation. So in our search here, we found 138 results. And we're not gonna go through all of these, but in real life, you might, you might work down through them. But let me explain what we're seeing here in the results. Uh, in our test patient population here, if I go down, what we're looking at is at the top level, the guarantor, uh, the number of accounts they have, which is really the number of practices. So if you're a single practice next gen site, you're always just gonna see your, your practice. If your multi-practice and your user ID has access to those other practices in NextGen, then you can see across those practices. So in this case, uh, we go ahead and span a couple different practices that there are credits in. So let's dive down to some of the sample accounts that I've set up in our test population here. I'm gonna go ahead and pick Marion Kelly. And again, we're looking at the guarantor level at the top most. Uh, item, we can go ahead and click the plus box on the left there to expand it. And what we see underneath, there are up to five levels of detail. So we start out at the guarantor, then we go down to the practice slash account level. Then we go down to who's getting the refund, and that's gonna be the guarantor or one of the payers. 
All right, so that's the third or middle level. Then we go down to the individual encounters that make up that balance, go into that entity. And then if we want, we can even go down to the charge with the credit on it. So if there's a particular charge you want to target, and you know maybe there's credits on two of them, but you just want to refund one of them, you can pick that one. In fact, um, the way it works is if you pick at the lowest level, just that item gets picked. But if you pick at an upper level, everything gets picked. So it makes it easy to select what you need. Now these checkboxes here that I'm using, we have three of them. One is for task it out to the work log. One is for issue a refund. And then the uh, third one is for go ahead and take this money. We want to distribute it somewhere to where money is owed. If we need more information on these accounts, we have screens that mimic the financial summary and account summary in NextGen. Uh, what we found with clients is there's some dollar amounts that they can kind of fast track because they know it's a copay or such, and there's other odd dollar amounts that require some more research. So we want to give you the tools to help make decisions in Refund Manager. But for example, if you couldn't decide if you wanted to do it in Refund Manager, you may just task it into the work log and work on it later. Okay, for our demonstration today, I'm gonna to pick several of these that we wanna go ahead and refund. So I'm gonna pick Mary and Kelly where we have six encounters with credits on them that have been accumulated over time. Now, if you think about it in NextGen, you're gonna go into the encounters, you're gonna create the transactions, create the refund, all that stuff. Well, in Refund Manager, if I click the refund checkbox, when we tell it to go, it's going to do all that work on your behalf. It's going to create all those transactions for you so you don't have to. And that's part of that streamlining the interface. So we're going to get the refunds for these six encounters done for us automatically in just a couple moments when we tell it to go ahead and go. So that's kind of an easy one where we have credits that are all due the guarantor. But what if we have a mix of credits that are out there? Maybe some are due to the payer, some are due to the guarantor. Well, I set up another test case that we have, and this is Mildred Key. And we'll see, again, here's the practice account level, and then here's who's getting the refund. So we have three entities that are getting the refund. So and we can go ahead and expand any of these to see the encounters and even go down another level to the charges underneath. Now I'm going to clean this up. The screen looks a little busy, but what we found is most clients after using Refund Manager several times get real familiar with, you know, what the fields are in each column. You know, is it the patient, the encounter timestamp? So if we turn off the headers, the screen suddenly starts to look a lot clearer. So we give you that option to kind of work with the training wheels on or, you know, take them off and have a much clearer screen. And you can always toggle it back on if you're looking at a column or a cell and you're not sure what that value is, but we found it makes it a lot cleaner when you can turn those off. So in this case, we have uh, refunds that are going to Mildred, to Medicare, to United Healthcare. If we decide we just want to refund Mildred, again, we can click on one of those lower checkboxes. For the sake of our demonstration today, I want to issue a lot of refunds just to show you how fast it does everything. So we're gonna issue refunds against these credits, basically to, to everyone, everyone's getting a refund, right? So it's Mildred's gonna get um, their refund, Medicare's gonna get their refund, United Healthcare is gonna get their refund. So this is kind of an extreme example, but it shows that you can kind of pick and choose, you know, which credits you care about for that day, and that refund manager can handle them if they're gonna go out to multiple entities. So let's talk a moment about distributions. Normally, um, you'd probably use one of the distribution filters here to find exclusively distributions and process those. But for the sake of doing everything in one demonstration today, I know a couple of these that already have a credit somewhere and owe money somewhere else. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, another test patient, Catherine here. And what I'll see is down lower, we have a $220 credit, but up higher, we only have $185 credit. So that tells us basically the client owes us $34 and change somewhere on another encounter. So that means it's a good candidate for distribution. 
you know, maybe it was a posting error, maybe something, you know, someone put um, a payment on one encounter instead of distributing it across encounters. So we can take refund manager now and say, you know what, let's pick the uh, third checkbox here, the D for distribution, and go ahead and have refund manager move that money by default. And it'll start going oldest to newest on its own. If we want to see what it's going to do, we can right mouse and we can pick distribution preview. And everything to the left of the mouse here is where the money's coming from. So we have a $220 credit. We're going to take $34.15 from that. And we're going to move it over to this encounter, this charge, and put it against the $34.15 balance. So the distribution feature was great and powerful and people loved it for a number of years. Then they came to us and said, well, you know, again, this is, this is great, but it would be really even greater if we could manually assign that money. So we came up with a screen that allows you to take those credit balances and apply them to monies owed on other encounters. And even if you are multi-practice across practice, Tom had a great example up front that said, we have clients who take deposits in the practice and then later on need to move them to the surgery center once the patient becomes a patient and next gen in the surgery center. So we have that ability to move things around within the one practice or in multiple practices. So again, you know, if you're single practice, you can still use this. If you're multiple practice, you can still use it there too. So I'm going to go up um, to Dennis Kramer and expand this out. And again, we'll see we have several practices. We look up here, our three accounts, and then we can keep expanding down and we can see the various credits that are sitting out there in the different practices. Now, if we want to control how these credits get moved around, we can simply just pick everything using the checkbox there. And instead of distribution preview, which we used last time, we can go into our distribution matching screen. And what we're going to do is pair up money on the left with amounts owed on the right. So for example, if I want to take this $33 and apply it against the $45, I can build that match. It'll deduct the 33. It'll show us the balance that's left here. Maybe we'll take that 12. So now we've totally paid off that balance. Um, these two will pair together because it's the same amount. So you can kind of go through and pick and choose how you want to distribute the money. And you can distribute it until either you've used up all your credits or applied against all your debits, or you can pull up kind of midstream once you've got the ones you want to handle for today. Um, you have those transactions staged here. So when we tell refund manager to go ahead and do its processing, it's going to create all that for us. So that's distributions, that's refunds. Tasking is real easy. If we're in one of these and it just looks to be a complete mess, well, you know, we'd simply click the uh, task checkbox and it'll go into the work log. And then we can go ahead and work through those at a later date and time. But what it gives you to, the ability to do is kind of get a flywheel effect. You get going in Refund Manager processing these things and the ones that are going to wreck your momentum, then you might task those out to the work log and handle those later. So we've told Refund Manager there's several of these things we want to distribute, several we want to refund. Now let's go ahead and give it the go ahead. So we're going to right mouse again, just like we do in Practice Management. I'll pick Process Items. We get our screen up on top showing us the number of charges that are going to be affected. In the middle are our parameters because we've done refunds and we've done distributions already. It's remembered the codes I used last time. I haven't done a uh, task yet, so I can go ahead and pick our next gen task type that we want to use. And this will go to the default user or group that's assigned to that task. So I'm going to click start and it's gonna create 11 refund transactions for us. So instead of us bumping around next gen, going into encounters, creating transactions, typing in the amounts, it just did all that for you. And it's all tagged as you because Refund Manager, when it launched out of next gen, knows who you are. So it's gonna task to that one encounter. So we'll go ahead and do that. 
And then last, it's going to do those distributions. It's going to move the money around. It's going to quick give me a quick summary first. Again, everything to the left is where it's coming from. Everything to the right is where it's going to. And each line is really a transaction moving from one to the other. So similar things to the refunds. It just did the work for us without us having to bump around and enter all that information and move between encounters. So that's the credit scout portion. That's the next gen facing piece where you're handling your credit balances and deciding if you wanna refund them, distribute it to other encounters or charges or task it into the work log. So what does that look like in next gen? Well, in next gen, it's been putting all of these transactions against a batch, much like you do if you were typing them all in manually. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick our batch and post it. And then we'll go into the detail on several of these. We'll look at uh, distribution first, and then we'll come in, we'll look at a refund, and then we'll push the refunds out to the accounting system and pull back the check information in the next gen. So this is your normal batch listing report um, using the transaction codes that we picked in that uh, processing screen. So let's go ahead and go and look at this top one here, Dennis Kramer. And we'll see the transactions that are here in the account summary. And the net is zero because it's moving money within the same practice. So it created all those transactions for you, all right? All of these up here were just done by clicking the checkbox and telling it to go ahead and do that on your behalf. So let's take a look at one of the refunds. So I'm gonna go into this 24351 and go over here to the transactions. And we'll see, here's our transaction that was created. Here's the batch it was attached to. Refund manager also created a note for documentation about the uh, refund that was created. So this is great. We have all these transactions in next gen. They were done for us. They were done really quick without us having to type a lot. So it really streamlined that process. Now these refunds, we want to take them and get them into the accounting system, whether it's QuickBooks or Solomon or Great Plains or ACPAC, you know, any number of them that we support. So I'm going to go back out of next gen into refund manager. And again, this can be the same day. It can be a week later, depending on your process. I'm going to find batches that contain refund transactions. The cool thing about these batches is that Net, uh, Refund Manager can export next-gen batches that contain manually created refund transactions like you've traditionally done in next-gen and the ones that have been done using Refund Manager's Credit Scout. So it doesn't mind if you did them the old way or you did them the new way. It still has the ability to export them out for you. So here's our batch. And I'm going to right mouse and pick export. Most accounting systems uh, do a really good job of consolidating checks for the same entity. For QuickBooks, we've built this screen that allows us to basically pair up any ones we want to pair up. I've set it to default by pairing up the patient ones. And then the insurance ones we do manually, but this one down here for the patient was already took those six encounters and it's going to create a single check in QuickBooks. Uh, if you were using something like Great Plains, you just kind of bypass that screen and keep going so it wouldn't even pop up. So now, because we're using a direct interface, instead of sending a spreadsheet to accounting and having them type in all the demographics and payment information and GL coding, Refund Manager just pushed all that into the accounting system for them. So that's the automation. That just goes over there and then they've got the information in in there and they can go ahead and print the check. So I'm gonna pull up QuickBooks and we can see the checks that were just created today. And we can see on the ones where it was a combination, 
that uh, we have the detail that if you're using a one check per page with a stub, you can print that up on the stub if you want. So all that information was just put into QuickBooks without having to do the data entry. So that is normally a huge time, sa time savings. So I'm gonna go ahead and print our batch of checks so we get check numbers assigned to them. I'm just gonna print them to a file here. And then if we had to do reprints, you'd still handle that in your accounting system, just like you do today. But now these have check numbers assigned to them and also the dates of the checks and so on. So how do we get that back into next gen? Well, that's equally as quick. So we can go into refund manager, same day, different day, it's fine. We can go to the import, we can click find. Here's our export that we just did. Right mouse import and it's going to go out to the accounting system and get the check information and it's going to bring that check information into next gen so if we go back here i'm going to just jump on and jump off so that it refreshes the screen we'll see now you have the check number check date check amount in here so you don't have to key that information back in and you've kind of closed the loop with the next gen side of the house so they know a check's been printed they know about when it uh, went out so if someone calls they can go ahead and look that up and it's there additionally when we did the export to the accounting system refund manager created a second note again for that documentation just containing who it's going to and the address that was in play because remember in next gen right you can have a refund address or their normal address uh, refund manager also has an address book that allows you to have multiple addresses for a single entity so you know which address was in play well that'll be captured here in this encounter note for you automatically so all that gets done on your behalf using refund manager this is part of the streamlining and automating of the refund process that refund manager provides for next gen practices tom i'll go ahead and uh, turn it back over to you so you can finish out the uh, the demonstration and then we can take the questions and answers okay thank you Joe so now that you have um, now that you have seen how to process credit balances on uh, on patient accounts with regards to issuing refund checks or uh, applying uh, those credits to encounters that have open balances on them or tasking off for the research um, people generally ask us what it takes to implement uh, Refund Manager. So it takes about 90 minutes to physically install uh, Refund Manager in your environment. And, uh, and then we, we created uh, four or five training videos are about 10 to 10 minutes in length each. Uh, and we ask you to view those uh, training videos. We also give you the Refund Manager user guide that we ask you to go through and read as well. Um, and then at the end of that period of time, what we'll do is we'll uh, hold a question and answer call with one of our Refund Manager specialists with your staff to answer any questions that you might have with regards to uh, what she saw in the training videos and what she read in the user guide. Um, then what we'll do is schedule a training session with you, you know, using your test environment, using Refund Manager in your test environment, and um, deciding what to do with, um, or teaching you how to use Refund Manager in your, in your test environment. Now, once you feel comfortable with uh, Refund Manager in your test environment, then what we'll do is uh, point it over to your production environment, and we'll be on the phone with you as well, going through your first few batches of credits uh, in your production environment to answer any questions and, and answer or deal with any situations that, that might come up there that you have as well. So we're, we're um, along with you in the process from, from start to finish. So a little bit about uh, Itentive, uh, just a couple of slides on who we are so you know uh, who, who you're talking with. Uh, we were founded in 2003, and uh, as Chelsea mentioned earlier, our mission is to create additional value for your next-gen investment. 
We know that when you purchased uh, NextGen, it was a major purchase. And probably over the years, that investment has grown. So we want to work with you to get as much value out of that investment as possible. Uh, we have 19 years of experience with NextGen, and we have uh, 77 employees in the company, most of which are consultants that uh, are that travel from uh, practice to practice, health center to health center, uh, working with the organizations to um, do just what I said, get as much value out of, out of NextGen as possible, working with um, improving business process, with improving workflows, um, working with uh, the reporting and helping improve decision making as well. If you take the 2003 to 19 years, they do not add up. And the reason for that is uh, IPENTA started out as the IT department for a medical organization. And back in the late 90s and early 2000s, the business mantra was focus on what you do best and outsource the best. The medical organization was going to outsource the IT group. And the leaders of the IT group said, well, if you want to do that, what we'd like to do is form our own company and provide services back to you. So they agreed to do that. And from that point forward, we've worked with over 350 to 400 clients that use NextGen. And we've become a strategic partner with NextGen as well. Uh, some of our services, uh, we can do implementations of, of, of Refund Manager as well as upgrades of Refund Manager. As I mentioned, uh, we do process improvements, workflow improvements. Um, we have a group of developers that can uh, enhance the uh, templates, and uh, we can provide uh, uh, upgrade implementation as well as uh, support uh, of those implementations. We also have a group of IT folks that can provide IT managed services, meaning that we can um, support your IT infrastructure so your, your network infrastructure, your local area network infrastructure, your desktops, your laptops, your printers, things like that. Uh, we also have a, our own data center where we can host uh, uh, clients' uh, IT environment in our, in our hosting center. And then we have a group of developers that develop productivity tools like Refund Manager, which is, we just went through. Uh, we also have a couple other products uh, called uh, ChartGuard is one of them, which is a business continuity solution. Uh, and basically what that is, is it um, every night it goes out to the database, next-gen database, looks at the appointments that are scheduled to come in to each of your office locations, health center locations, and it begins to uh, pull the chart information for each of those patients, puts it into a file, and pushes that file out to a uh, desktop or a computer at, that's local uh, at that particular office so that the uh, patient uh, chart is there locally um, in case the uh, office loses access to next gen and if that does occur what the providers and staff do is they can go over to that PC and get the chart information and the appointment listing off of that PC so they can continue to see their patients while the IT group is trying to get uh, next gen back online and then a derivative of that is called Chart Card Archiver, which is mainly used for archiving um, for long-term storage the, the charts. At this time, we'll answer any questions that you you might have, so you can enter it into the, um, the question box uh, in the uh, uh, go to meeting screen there. And I'll turn it back over to Chelsea. Okay, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Joe, and uh, thank you, everybody who bared with us. It looks like we have a number of questions, so I'm sure, though I'm sure we'll be able to get through them fairly quickly. Um, I'm sure that we answered some of them during the webinar, but like I said, we're just going to take them in the order that we got them and and roll through them here. So, first question: uh, Do the refunds for insurers create void claims, or does it produce an actual refund check? I'll go ahead and take that one. It produces an actual refund check. Um, that's part of obviously what Refund Manager does is it'll take that and create the do the refund transaction code and create the check for the insurance. If you're doing another process where you're um, recouping it through a, another means, then Refund Manager for the insurances may not make a lot of sense. What we found over time is the refund problem is probably you know, an 80-20, 80% being mostly patients and 20% being insurances. So the you know value of refund manager is mostly on the patient side, though it will help you if you are doing checks for insurance refunds. Great, thank you, Joe. 
Next question. When the refund adjustment is made, can we select the adjustment code it uses? Can that adjustment be set for patient versus payer refunds? Absolutely. Um, when we picked those checkboxes and then we did that right mouse process, it brought up that processing screen that had the codes in there. And those are your next gen transaction codes. So for the refunds, it can use any refund code that you've defined. And uh, most clients like yourself, it sounds like you have a different code they use for payers versus patients. And Refund Manager will even support uh, practices that have different refund codes for the insurances by financial class. So if it's, you know, refund BCBS or refund Aetna or refund United Healthcare, you can set all that up in Refund Manager too. So we can, you know, definitely use those codes. Uh, they're the actual next gen codes and you get to pick which ones they are and separate them out by patient and payer. And again, within the payer, you can even slice them out by financial class. Thanks, Joe. Uh, next question, I think that we answered, but if we didn't, uh, you know, reach out to us and we'd be happy to show you again, but I did see that it came through before we went over it. Uh, can you show us what the transaction looked like in NextGen PM after posting? So I think we went over that, but we'd be happy to show you again. Um, if you'd like to see it, just let us know. Perfect. Yes, we did. Thank you. Next question, and I love this one. How do we get a demo in pricing? Tom, you want to take that one? Sure. Uh, if you want to uh, see another demonstration of it, uh, go ahead and contact me via my email address or uh, via uh, phone number. And uh, pricing, uh, we can talk about that as well uh, with regards to that. But we have uh, basically, to give you an idea of what the pricing looks like, at the high level, uh, we have three components to the pricing. There's a license fee, and then there is a installation and training fee and then there is the annual uh, software maintenance fee. Um, the two initial fees that I talked about, the license fee and the installation and training fee are one-time fees. Your only recurring fee is the annual uh, maintenance fee. And then we have uh, three levels of, uh, of licensing, a standard level license, a professional level license, and an enterprise level license. So when, when, uh, when you contact me, we can go through um, see which level license uh, you follow to. Perfect. Thank you, Tom. Next question. And I might say this accounting software wrong, so bear with me. Does it work with Albilla MIP fund accounting software? Okay. I'm, I'm going to jump into that one. And actually, I'm going to, I see the next one yep. here. Does Perfect. it work if NextGen is hosted because uh, and the accounting software is on a local server because they're kind of in related especially for a bill of MIP. Uh, we do have a file based interface where it can export out a file that MIP can read in and then MIP can export out a file with the check information that refund manager can read in. The good news is because that one is file based it actually lends itself nicely to working if NextGen is in a different environment than the accounting system and we do work with a number of practices that are hosted by various third parties um, including, you know, NextGen and ourselves and some of the other uh, NextGen partners out there that are doing hosting. So all that's there. It does work in Citrix environments. It does work whether it's local or hosted. Uh, for the file-based interface, that's real straightforward if the environment's split. Uh, for the direct interfaces, we can work with you on for some, uh, some alternatives for how those would work in your environment. So you know, definitely if you're interested, you know, reach out to us and we can work with you on the details for integration with the accounting system. Okay, so basically it's fairly customized and likely we'll be able to come up with a solution to make it work if it doesn't right away. Right, Joe? Yep. Perfect. Well, I think that that's all the questions we have, but we'll stay on for an extra minute in case someone's in the middle of typing. Uh, again, if you have any questions or if they occur to you later, uh, both Tom and Joe's information is up on the screen. Uh, I'll be sending out an email just with a link to the recording later this week, so you can always reply back to that in case you want to see the recording. Uh, anyway, you can get a hold of us. We're happy to answer questions and, um, and, and happy to do demos or schedule one-on-ones, whatever works best for you. Just let us know and and we'll make it work. And thank you for joining in with us today. And I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Tom and Joe, thank you for your time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming to the webinar today.